everyone. Um, this is a talk on septic arthritis. Um, let's start. So septic arthritis is a destructive arthropathy of one or more joints caused by pathogenic inoculation of microbes. In developed countries, cases occur about in six every 100,000 population. Um, and in those with an underlying joint disease or prosthesis, uh, it's estimated to be about 70 cases per 100,000. Uh, in large joint, uh, it's much more common than a small joint, uh, as you can see below. Just before we start, uh, the anatomy of the synovial joint, which is much more common than any other joint in the body. Um, the features of the synovial joint are that uh, there's two bone ends covered by hyaline cartilage. They're surrounded by a capsule it's a joint cavity. Um, they're reinforced by ligaments and lined internally by synovial membrane and the joints can move. Synovial membrane has no basement membrane or tight junctions, which explains why how the joint and cartilage that has no blood supply gets its nutrients, as well as how bacteria inoculates these joints. The pathology involved in uh, the cause of septic arthritis is via three mechanisms. It can either be hematogenous spread, direct inoculation, or extension of the infection from adjacent tissues. The most common by far is hematogenous spread, and it largely involves larger joints. Direct inoculation tends to be by trauma, insect bites, or even animal bites, uh, scopes, or intraarticular injections. And adjacent infections refers to osteomyelitis or infection of the, of the adjacent vein. The risk factors involved in uh, septic arthritis are largely dependent on the type of uh, spread. So if, for instance, you're considering direct inoculation, you want to consider things such as is this person has this person had recent uh, joint surgery have they had recent surgery on the joint have they had any recent injections in regards to hematogenous spread things to think about would be diabetes and uh, HIV uh, which increase the risk of infection as well as uh, IPD drug users uh, other forms of sepsis or systemic infections and especially in the young population you want to consider sexual activity and then continuous spread could be from ulcers or skin lesions that are near the joint that's in question. The microbiology uh, or the organism that's the culprit for the uh, infection tends to uh, be Staph aureus, which is largely the bacteria responsible in most septic or most episodes of septic arthritis. One of particular note is uh, gonorrhea, uh, especially in the young sexually active individual. Um, and the other ones you can see, uh, uh, some of the more rare ones can be found in other things. Um, and looking at uh, on the right there, you can see that uh, depending on the underlying pathology, so if someone has rheumatoid arthritis, they're more likely to get uh, a Staph aureus or strep pyogenes infection. Um, and you can see there with age, hence be just because they have increased risk of other risk factors, um, and they're the more common. Uh, bacteria that can affect them. So what do you think, or what are the features that you look for in someone with septic arthritis? So the most common joint is the knee joint. Uh, and then other things to think about are the sternoclavicular joint or the sacroiliac joint in someone with IVD use. Up to 22% of people can also have polyarticular disease, so it may not just be one single joint. And you always suspect uh, septic arthritis if a prosthesis is present. Uh, and in underlying joint disease, you should always consider uh, an issue when it's out of proportion with their usual joint pain or disease. And like I was saying before, in someone who's young, you need to consider uh, unprotected intercourse. Things that you'd expect to see is that, a, that have a painful swollen joint, but in particular, it's painful on passive and active movement and not just active alone. Joint uh, is usually held in a position of, that maximizes the space. So in the hip, that's an abducted flexed hip with external rotation. And in the knee, that's an extended knee joint. Symptoms are usually less than two weeks. And in regards to other systemic symptoms, fever is the most, by far the most common, but they can also have chills and rigors. 
to diagnose cystic arthritis uh, it's largely based on the clinical picture from the history exam as well as investigations so these include blood cultures white cell count crp which you'd expect to be elevated uh, you would look also look for urine function a liver function tests urine tests and uric acid levels to rule out uh, non-infective causes of joint inflammation such as gout um, you get Im you can get imaging such as an x-ray of the knee which may show joint infusion an ultrasound a ct and an mri if these are all if the imaging blood cultures bloods uh, clinical picture and examination all kind of make you largely suspicious of septic arthritis then the next step would be synovial joint aspirate and you would send off cultures gram stains crystals cell count and don't forget about chlamydia and gonorrhea as i said the results from the aspirate show so here's a spread of different um, results that you could expect depending on the cause of note the most common uh, thing that you'd expect is that a white blood cell count of greater than 50,000. And what's also of note is that the neutrophils in that count would make up more than 90%. Um, these don't confirm the diagnosis of septic arthritis but lead to a very suspicious picture. Um, to get the aspirate, uh, the only real contraindication is an overlying infection such as. Um, cellulitis and like I was saying before this could lead to direct inoculation by introducing an infection into an otherwise sterile joint. Um, this is a very sterile procedure um, and as you can see in the picture there uh, you want to aim fill for the tibial plateau, the femur and the patella and you want to go in between somewhere in there. The most common point though that most people go through is the lateral superior point. Um, local anesthetic is optional um, but it does uh, give concern of an increased risk of a false positive. Other differentials to consider, so you want to consider, besides infection, you want to consider tumour, which would be useful to exclude with imaging. Uh, rheumatoid disease, such as rheumatoid arthritis, or some other uh, arthritis, such as gout, um, or pseudogout, um, which can be seen with crystals, and also to consider have they had any trauma, um, which would just explain the swollen joint. Uh, so the first priority of management is trying to get an aspirate from the joint and examining the fluid. Also, you want to support the patient, so you want to make sure the patient's stable. So you do general supportive care where needed, so analgesia, IV fluid, as well as investigations such as blood tests. Withholding antibiotics, if appropriate, uh, is ideal as this increases the likelihood of culturing something from either the scope or wash out if, if it goes down that pathway or the joint aspirate and based on clinical suspicion and aspirate results the decision is made whether to wash out the joint or not antibiotic of choice uh, kind of depends on what you suspect to be the organism at play so if a gram positive cocci is suggest, uh, suspected then you consider cofazolin or flucloxacillin unless it's MRSA in which case you would give vancomycin If the gram stain suggests it's gram negative bacilli, you consider cephalosporins. If the gram stain shows nothing, then clinical judgment is required. Um, Intraarticular antibiotics have shown to have no change in the patient's outcome, and the duration of antibiotics can last anywhere up to six weeks or more. Things can go badly with septic arthritis, and the mortality depends on the associated com comorbidities, but generally range from about 10 to 15%. It can be as high as 50% when it is polyarticular and is in the presence of staph aureus or rheumatoid arthritis. In cases of IVDU, uh, they're more likely to repeat for surgical procedures, have longer hospital stays and higher rates of mortality. And follow-up uh, with an MRI should be considered if there's concern about osteomyelitis.